We are at the G.B. Hodge Center in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where tonight ESPN Plus presents men's college basketball. Tonight it's the back end of a two-game set as the Hampton Pirates are in town to take on the Spartans of USC Upstate. As we take a look at last night's game summary, Hampton out to a great start. USC Upstate came all the way back. Last second shot by Everett Hammond came up short as Hampton hung on for the one-point win. And a pleasant good evening, everyone. Brock Bowling, Richmond Weaver with you. And Richmond, a great start for Hampton last night. Slow start for Upstate. It made a monster comeback. Hampton had to hang on for dear life. Well, unfortunately for Upstate, that's been a theme this whole season. They've been falling behind real early in games and had to fight back. Just didn't have enough to finish the game last night. And for tonight's game, this back-to-back -back series and the back end of a series, it's all going to be about who has the freshest legs. Let's start with the visitors from Hampton and the Pirates last night were led in scoring by senior Davion Warren, a career-high 34 points. The 6'6 guard, he was a one-man show, hitting 65% from the field in that career-high and 5 for 5 at the free-throw line, while also pulling down 8 rebounds. And on the other side for USC Upstate, it was led in scoring last night by junior Everett Hammond. The Silver Spring, Maryland native, he helped pace the Spartans' comeback with 21 points, showing why he was a preseason All-Big South second team selection. And time now for the Ingalls keys to the game. Richmond, what do you have for us here tonight? Yeah, I think for Hampton, it's all about being one, don't be one dimensional. They've got to have better scoring balance. Only one person had double figures outside of Davion Warren, who scored 49% of their points last night. And for Upstate, you got to have short-term memory. You can't let one loss beat you twice. And a way to do that, you improve your free throw shooting. Shot 63% in last night's one-point loss. But in their three wins, they've shot almost 80%. So tonight, it's all about when they get to the free throw line, they have to convert. Game two of a back-to-back -back in the back end of this two-game series. It'll be Hampton wearing the white uniforms with the blue trim, and Upstate will wear the black uniforms with the green trim. Evan Zink to jump center circle for USC Upstate against the seven-foot star in the middle, Deshore Dickens for the Hampton Pirates. Opening tap, and here we go. Time now for the Sunbelt Reynolds starting lineup. The Hampton Pirates have the opening possession of the game, and Rich, the lineup for the Pirates of Hampton. Well, I think the big key here is also watch out for Chris Shelton uh, because he's going to be the guy who can really shoot the three-pointer. He's one of the best in the nation right now. He's actually 10th in the nation for three-point percentage. Hampton 6-8 and eight on the year, 5-4 and four in the Big South Conference. Eked out a one-point win last night against USC Upstate, going for the two-game sweep here tonight at the G.B. Hodge Center in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Dickens, quick turnaround over. Zink is missed, and the rebound by Upstate. And now the Sunbelt Reynolds starting lineup for the Spartans, and Rich, the lineup for Upstate. Well, the guy that we also need to focus on, talking about three-point shooting, that's Dalvin White. Made 6 of 12 from three-point land last night. So, again, he's a guy that can get hot and help the comeback last night. Hammond. Comes up short on the jumper. Might have been partially blocked. It's controlled by Hampton, which is 5-4 and four in the league. Had lost four of five conference games before getting a win last night against Upstate as Dean hangs in the air. Finds Shelton open three. And there's who we just talked about, Chris Shelton. Again, just what he can do from the three-point from beyond the arc has been very impressive this entire season. 43 of his 87 shots have been threes. And now make it 44 out of 88. He's shooting exactly 50% from downtown this year for the Hampton Pirates. Now Upstate trying to respond on its second possession of the game. Here's White. Bruner. High arcing three goes in. And he ties the game here in the first 90 seconds. And that's going to be the key. Can Upstate get off to a better start? And part of that is having the outside shooting they didn't have early on, shooting in the low 20% uh, early on in the game last night. Shelton, a deep three, puts it in again. His second three of the game, he has six points, and the Pirates lead by three. Not only is he 10th in the nation in three-point field goal percentage, but he's seventh in the nation in threes made. So he's a guy, again, that can light it up and obviously lead in the Big South. 
Zink skips it up to Aldridge. His three, that's missed. Rebound Dickens for Hampton into the hands of Dean. Here's Warren, had the hot hand last night, 34 points. Missing his first shot of this game. Rebound upstate and wants to run. Here's Hammond, White. Plays catch back and forth around the perimeter. Upstate had won three in a row. All of the Big South coming into this series. Had that momentum stopped last night. Lost the game just by one as White floats one up. Offensive rebound, Zink. He had it stripped out of bounds. Stays with Upstate underneath. And Zink is just one of those guys that he can fight and fight for those rebounds. The head coach of Hampton is Edward Joyner in his 12th season. Was a former assistant at Hampton for three years before taking over the head coaching job in 2009. Here's Zink inside. Now to Aldrich. Shot clock at five. Bruner has to put up a three. Rims it around and out in the rebound by Hampton. That was the story last night for Upstate. So many shots just uh, would not go down. The iron very unfriendly last night in the loss. Here's Dickens, lost it, out of bounds, turnover Hampton. It's first. And the iron was definitely unkind for Upstate last night, and Coach Palmore was definitely upset with that. Acting floor coach Stacy Palmore. Pinch hitting for Dave Dickerson this season. Coach Dickerson self-isolating due to some COVID-19 concerns regarding his family. and But he's still coaching the team virtually in practice and, of course, exchanging input with Coach Palmore after games. And that had to have been a hard one last night to take, uh, a comeback that came up just short. Yeah, and Coach Palmore talked about how just in terms of – they were able to come back, but they can't continue to get in this situation, especially in these back-to-back -back series games where you're falling behind too early because you're wasting so much energy to try to get back in these games. And here, just Tommy Bruner just continuing to try to fight towards the rim, but Dickens is there to almost, you know, contest the shot, but then also great defense by Hampton there. Godwin comes up empty, got his own rebound, puts up a three. And the rebound on the back end by Bruner for USC Upstate. Bruner. Hammond in traffic. Puts it in. And I think that's what Upstate really needs to do. And Coach Palmore talked about that as well after the game last night. That he felt that they were settling for too many early shots and didn't allow them to get into an offensive set and really look for an easier shot trying to get into the paint. Godwin hits another three for Hampton. That's his first points of the night. Normally just a 28% three-point shooter. Extends the lead to four for the Hampton Pirates. Yeah, well, Godwin, he scored over 1,300 points in high school, so we know he can put the ball in the hole. Upstate trying to respond. Almost five minutes gone by in this opening half of play. Here's Zink, mismatch against the taller Dickens. Goes into the body of Dickens. They play on. Now he's finally fouled. Looks like a reach-in foul on Russell Dean. It is on Dean. That's his first and a timeout on the floor. 15.05 to go in the first half, and Hampton leads it by four. For that. 15.05 to go in the first half. Hampton leads USC Upstate 9-5. to Rich, you're... Thoughts of the first few minutes, again, a slow start shooting-wise for Upstate. Yeah, it definitely is, but at least also Hampton is not uh, shooting it the way they did last night. And I think some of that has to do with just the second game and how fresh are your legs in this back-to-back -back series type of situation. And the big thing here is can Upstate just not settle for the three-point shot and try to work it inside like they did with Zink, and that's a great opportunity for Zink to draw a foul and get to the free throw line and score some easy points. Two for two for Nevin Zink, his first points of the game from the field. Upstate shooting just 20%, two of 10 from the floor. Hampton, three of seven, 43%. Dickens, back door inside to Shelton, and he scores. He has eight points already in the first 
five plus minutes of this game. He comes in averaging 11 tonight, already with eight. Well, it looks like they are trying to get a little bit more balanced scoring rather than just counting on one person. But now, is it Warren or is it going to be Shelton tonight? Six to shoot. Bruner hangs in the air to White. Hammond, three on the shot clock. He puts it up and miss. Rebound. Aldrich goes up strong and had his dunk attempt block. It's rebounded by Zink. Out to White. A three. No. Three opportunities and nobody can score on that end. Rebound. Hampton. Dean all the way. Lays it in. And that is Deuce Dean's game to a T right there. He is a drive and then distribute, but if it's easy basket, he's going to take that. Great opportunity for Hampton there. Then unforced error right there by Upstate. There's head coach or acting floor coach Stacy Palmore. He said after the game last night, uh, he felt like his team should have won the game last night. His team just didn't make plays when it needed to. And uh, But he said... Got to have a short-term memory with this team after the loss last night. Have to get back after it and try and salvage a split here today. And considering they were 12 of 19 from the free throw line, so not horrible, but just can you imagine if they just go 14 of 19, just two more, and it's a completely different outcome. They all add up, don't they? They sure do, and Coach Palmore, he talked about that, that uh, still they need to be able to hit those free throws uh, when it matters. Stoppage in play here. Yeah, I'm not sure what the. Uh... Oh, okay. Disinfecting the uh, basketball. Got a new ball in play. And here we go. Hampton by six. Almost six and a half minutes gone by. Opening half of play. Warren, he's 0 for 2 from downtown. Slow start for him tonight. Rebound Jatavius Watson into the game for the first time tonight for USC Upstate. And Jatavius Watson is getting more and more playing time, uh, getting 24 minutes last night just with his athleticism, but he's got to be able to hold on to the ball, though. Edward Oliver Hampton back to Dean. He can't connect. Five for the rebound. Oliver Hampton misses again. And the rebound by Upstate. So the turnover by Upstate does not lead to a fast break basket for Hampton. Here's Bruner over to Hammond. Led the team in scoring last night with 21 points. And he puts in a three. And that's going to be big key. Can Everett Hammond and can Tommy Bruner be able to hit from outside? Combined, they were 9 of 31 last night, 29%. They just can't win without those guys being able to shoot the ball from the outside. And Shelton, a nice, soft jump shot. He's already in double figures with 10. Rich, he comes in averaging 11 a game. This is going to be a breakout star here in the Big South. He's showing just what he's been able to do, improving his outside shooting and just what a soft touch he has. Hampton by five. Hammond inside Watson, and it's off of Hampton. Out of bounds, stays with Upstate underneath. Well, that looked like it was off of Watson there to me. Obviously, oh, they yeah. changed the call. Okay. That's the fourth turnover on USC Upstate. Yeah, and you can see here as he's trying to get it down low to get some of those points in the paint, definitely just goes off of Watson's hand there. Here's Warren. He's yet to score in this game. Edward Oliver Hampton with a nice turnaround jumper. He scores his first two of the night, and the Pirates lead by seven. Bryson, Bozone in there with Aldrich, Hammond, Watson, and Bruner. Bruner inside Watson, lays it in. Great recognition there. Pick and roll, going hard to the basket was Watson, and that's why he's in the game with his athleticism, that he can be able to use that and get to the hole pretty quickly. Here's Warren so far. He's yet to score in this game at 34 last night, and he's still yet to score in this game. An air ball on that shot out of bounds and a timeout 
on the floor. 11-17 to go in the opening half. And the Upstate Spartans at home trying to salvage a split down five on ESPN+. Back in Spartanburg, 11-17 to go in the first half. And Hampton leads USC Upstate 17-12. Brock Bowling, Richmond Weaver with you. And for the Hampton Pirates, they have a trio of players leading in the league in the Big South rankings. Davion Warren leading the Big South in scoring. Chris Shelton, the top man in three-point shooting, and Deshaun Dickens leading the league in block shots per game. That's a good recipe for success. It definitely is, and we saw that last night, obviously, with Warren, what he was able to do offensively. And then for Dickens also, just remember, he's fifth in the nation in blocks as well. So he is a rim protector and a very difficult uh, person in the paint. Another slow start shooting-wise for USC Upstate to begin the game, just like last night so far. 4 of 15 from the floor, 20 six percent and coach palmore definitely was not wanting to have a situation to be in those stats again but that that's how you're going to improve that shooting percentage getting to the rim easy baskets and if you can't make the shot hopefully you can draw a foul and get to the free throw line that's tommy bruner's first points of the game he and everett hammond last night combined to score 41 of upstate's 68 points in the one-point defeat to the Hampton Pirates. Here's Dean, eight to shoot. Godwin, that's a two. Well, they say a three, looked like a foot was on the line, and now the referee stops the game to say that uh, Edward Oliver Hampton is limping. That looked like a two. It two did look like shot. a two, yes. I think they, I would probably take a look at that, and maybe they will at the next, at the break, but that definitely looked like he was on the line there trying to step back. So a three for now for Marquise Godwin to give him six points. And the lead is six as well, nearing the midway point of this first half of play. Shot clock at six. Here's Mozone with three. Backdoor pass inside to Watson, turned it over. Out of bounds, turnover by Upstate. It's fifth of the game. There's Jatavius Watson taking a break. He's had a bit of an injury bug here and there this season. He had it last year as well, but he's given the Spartans some good minutes here in the last couple of outings for Dave Dickerson's team. So Here's Hampton shooting 46% so far in the first half of play. Going for the sweep. Upstate going for the split here tonight in Spartanburg in Big South play. Warren, and that's his first two of the game. It's been a little quiet until that basket right there. He has, and uh, you can see a defensive change for Coach Palmore and the Spartans putting Joss Aldridge there, 6'7", forward on Warren where Everett Hammond was primarily guarding Warren last night. And that's a big height difference you can see and it's given Warren a little bit of uh, trouble this evening. So the shot by Ham, uh, Hammond hit the rim and the top of the basket support out of bounds goes to Hampton. Leading by seven and led by as many as 16 in the first half last night, 31-15. Hung on for a one-point win. And now another change for Coach Palmore going to a zone to try to keep the outside shooters from being able to connect. But... That's the weakness of a zone. You can give up easy baskets in the paint. Dickens' first two. Lead is back up to nine now. It's biggest lead of the game for Hampton. Low zone. Finds Zink. Shot clock inside of 10. Hammond driving all the way. Left hand. One of the foul didn't get it. Five on four for Hampton the other way. Here's Warren hanging in the air, missing the shot, but he's fouled. He'll head of the line and shoot two. And that what's, that's what makes Warren so difficult to defend is you have to respect his ability to stop and hit a mid-range jumper or even a three-pointer. But as you can see, he just lulls the defender to sleep and then takes it hard to the hole there. Not much Dalvin White could do but foul. 
So Warren at the line. Career high 34 points last night. Made three threes. He had eight rebounds. That's his third point of this game. And he just does it so efficiently. It just yeah. it's so smooth. And you can see just how his release is smooth. Just everything about his game is really smooth. And just considering that he only averaged 10 points a game last year. So he's doubling that output right now. It's very impressive. And he's in conference averaging almost uh, 25 points per game. That's his fourth point of the night. 34 last night. And 34 of the team's 69. So we had just under half of the team's yeah. points last night. Near steal by Hampton. Out of bounds. Stays with Upstate. Upstate trying to bounce back from last night's loss. Coach Palmore said after the game that about Davion, Davion Warren, you know, sometimes good offense just beats good defense. It does. Sometimes the other guy just makes a better play because there was actually some plays where Everett Hammond had really good defense. It was just that Warren just made a better play. Now White Zink, with the miss and Zink with the putback. Continuing Zink's stellar play on the offensive board side. I mean, this, this guy, that's 26 of his 38 rebounds coming into this game have been offensive rebounds, so he finds a knack to be able to get the ball on the offensive side of things. Mozone shot block, put back. Yes, second effort counts and a foul. He'll head to the line for one. Great job by Bryson Mozone not giving up on the play and continuing to fight and be ready to go no matter what happens. You can see the block there and just goes right back up. Hampton by seven here on ESPN+. Plus. what I like. Back in Spartanburg, 7.40 to go here in the first half, and Hampton leads USC Upstate 25-18. to 18. And Let's talk a little bit about Dalvin White. He's been dynamic over the last three games. Rich, look at the numbers he's averaged and put up in the last three. Oh, it's impressive, and that's one of the reasons why they were on their three-game winning streak and then almost made the furious comeback last night. And also just think about, just from a perspective, he's leading this team and only had two turnovers in those three games combined. Bryson Mozone completes the three-point play. He has three. USC Upstate now three of three of the line. Lead is down to six. 25-19. Raymond Bethay into the game for the first time. He played last night, saw significant minutes, and actually uh, contributed some good production for Hampton last night. Shot clock at six. Here's Godwin, puts up a high arcing three. And over the back foul called on Nevin Zink for Upstate. His first. Yeah, I think that was on Dickens over the back there for oh, Hampton. Yes, my, my mistake. It's, uh, it's on Dickens. That's why we have two sets of eyes right here. <laughs> well, it's a little bit different, too. You're thinking a white uniform for the home team, but with the back-to-back <laughs> -back series, they switch uniforms technically, so there's a home, different of a home and away. Bozone puts in a three. His first three of the game. He has six points. He shoots 36% from downtown this year, and the lead is cut to three. And then Upstate needs a shot of energy like that from Mozone. And we know what he can do leading the team last year in three pointers attempted and made. Shelton off the mark on that three. Fight for the rebound. Well, uh, Dalvin White had it. And it's out of bounds off of White. Stays with Hampton on the side. Here's Warren. Four points so far, 34 last night. That's a step back three, and it goes in for Warren, his first three of the game. He had three of those last night. Give him seven points for the game. 
and it's just so smooth even on the step back. You see just in balance and quick release and gets it over Hammond there. Zink is passed way over the hands of White out of bounds. Turnover number six. And usually you would see Zink go straight up, but that's where Dickens at seven foot just continued to contest there and made him think twice about turning with his left shoulder to go straight up because he was worried that his shot might get blocked and then led to the turnover with the bad pass. Alley-oop and the slam put down by Dickens. The assists from Deuce Dean. Well, Deuce Dean, he's, like I said, he is a distribute type of guy. First and foremost, he's going to look for the open man at all times and was able to find Dickens there on a the nice alley-oop. And just like that, the lead was down to three. Now it's back up to eight again. Here's Hammett, short on that three. Rebound by Godwin for Hampton, trying to push, but Upstate gets back on D. It's a Hampton team, which is trying to figure out these back-to-backs this year, according to head coach Edward Joyner. And uh, figured it out last night, only got a one-point win, but Joyner said it doesn't matter if you win by one or 20, a win is a win. Inside, Hammond, and he, oh, he can't finish. Rolls off the rim. Would have been a great assist for Zink. Instead, missed shot, rebound Hampton. And that seems to be the theme right now for just for Upstate last night and tonight. Just can't get the easy breaks on the rim. And you would think they would be able to get something at home. They're just not happening where Hampton's getting all the breaks, although Dickens misses there, but goes straight back up. Foul on the floor. It's on Zink. And that's his first foul on the floor. No shots coming up for Deshore Dickens. Hampton, the preseason ninth place team of the Big South Conference poll earlier this year. Right now it's at the top half of the league. And USC Upstate, the preseason fifth place team in the Big South. Here's Warren. It gets inside and drops it in. Just such a quick release, and they haven't been able to have an answer for Warren now that Josh Aldridge is out on the bench right now. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised if we see Josh come back into the game. Timeout upstate, 4.30 to go in the half. Spartans down 10. Or pro extra dollars with every purchase. Plus, they get members-only offers. Save time, save money, get rewarded. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Here are the updated Big South Conference standings. Hampton, 5-4 and four in the league in fourth place. USC Upstate have dropped a little bit. Down to sixth place in the standings at 3-4. and four. And uh, just like we expected, Rich, they took off one point from Marquise Godwin's point total. That uh, controversial shot he took. They counted for three. Look, looked at the replay. Only a two, so... He has five points, only 32 for the Pirates, 22 for the Spartans, Hampton by 10. Yeah, even still taking away that one shot, that one three-pointer made, changing it to a two, Hampton's still shooting 50% here in the first half, and that's the, the big difference here for this game, just like they did in the first half last night, shooting 55% in the first half. Here comes Upstate, down 10. It got out to a slow start last night against the Pirates. Slow start here again tonight, trying to fight its way back. Bruner, drawing lots of attention, finds White. Mozone's three, off the mark. High rebound taken by Davion Warren for the Hampton Pirates, clad in white. Warren has nine points. He's had to really work for those points so far here tonight. Didn't seem like he had to work too hard last night as he got 34 points. Shelton, quick release, three, and it goes in. His third three of the game, he has 13 points, and the lead is 13 as well. Just too hard to defend with that quick release there, and it'd be interesting to see if Coach Palmore, as he tried to change up defense just to give them a, the Pirates a different look each and every time they come down the floor because they just seem to be still in a zone right now. Uh, miscommunication, Hammond zigged, and Zink thought he was going to zag, and <laughs> out of bounds, turnover, <laughs> number seven. Well, Coach Palmore said last night, 
after the game that for this game tonight, his team cannot get in a, in a big hole early like it did last night. And well, it's in a big hole again. They sure are. And it has to come down to just being able to hit open shots. And I, as Coach Palmore also talked about, he wasn't happy with some of the shot selection that they had last night, rushing some shots. And that's a recipe for disaster when you're shooting cold and you continue to start pressing things. And we see Chris Shelton finally miss one. Bozone almost lost it, trapped, and he threw it away. Turnover on Upstate, it's eighth of the game. Up the floor, Warren thought about the three. Now he will take the three, leaves it short. Rebound by Dalvin White for USC Upstate. White's been quiet, has three points right now, goes inside. There's points number four and five. Nope, it's tipped in by Zink. And Zink again crashing those offensive boards. That's his specialty there. But you could also see on the previous possession with Warren that Josh Aldridge at 6'7", changed his shot a little bit and made him rush that three-pointer there. Godwin, that's a two, and knocks it in. Another long two for Godwin. He has seven, the lead back up to 13. Coming up on two minutes to go in the first half of play, Bruner reach in foul on Dean. That's his second, and we get a, do we have a timeout? I thought we did. I'd have to say the guard trio of Hampton with Shelton, Godwin, and Warren, they just have this special ability to have the step back, lull the defender asleep, and step back really smoothly. And speaking of smooth, Tommy Bruner takes it nice to the hole. Reverse lay-in by Bruner, his second basket. He has four points. Lead is down to 11. Inside, two minutes to go here in the first half. Warren. Off the mark, rebound Bruner. Upstate trying to push here in transition. Bruner inside Zink. Aldridge fouled. He'll shoot two. Fouls on Raymond Bethay is first. So at the line is Josh Aldridge. And you and I talked to Coach Stacy Palmore a while back. He says he calls Aldrich old man. <laughs> he says, he, he kids around with him says. That's a loving reference. He though. says <laughs> Aldrich moves, about, moves around about as well as I do, but he uh, does a great job of, he said, uh, kind of yelling at the guys, getting them fired up, and he literally moves guys around, pushes them around to where they need to be on D. He's almost a physical coach out there at times yeah. and being able to get guys in the right position and Guys look up to him. He's that type of leader uh, by words and action. Now Spartans hanging around, down nine. 90 seconds to go here in the first half of play. And that's what they seem to do. They just can hang around and give them opportunity to try to fight back and make a comeback. Can they do that here and get a defensive stop and try to Warren score Warren goes in for the jam attempt and comes up empty. Fight for the rebound out ahead of the pack is Bruner. He lays it in. His sixth point of the game. That was seven-point advantage for Hampton. Exactly one minute to go until the break. I don't think anybody expected to see Davion Warren take it to the hole like he did there and try for the dunk. It. But the three-point shooting just continues hot for Hampton. Another three for Shelton, the number one rated three-point shooter in the league, has his fourth three of the game. He has 16 points. Bruner trying to respond, and he puts it in along two. His eighth point of the game, the lead is down to eight. We're down to 30 seconds to go. Now, Upstate, this will be a big for them to get a defensive stop here. Timeout taken by Hampton. 30-second timeout, 29.1 seconds to go in the first half of play. And just mentally, for them to, for Upstate to be able to get a defensive stop here, and regardless if they score, obviously it would be very beneficial if they could, but just get a defensive stop here, and that get them some momentum heading into halftime. So the timeout by Hampton, Upstate, Talking on the sideline, started out the season 0 and 9, and then reeled off three straight wins, a win, 
on the back end of the double dip at high point. Two wins against Longwood and then losing last night to Hampton. Hampton, two and four in its last six games. Those two wins, one of them last night against Upstate by one. A win over UNC Asheville by two on the front end of the back-to-back last weekend. And I don't care if you get one win, two wins. If you win against Asheville, the preseason number two team in the Big South in the standings going into the year, that's a pretty good well job done. Without a doubt there. We know UNC Asheville is going to be one of the teams competing for a conference championship. About a six-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Here's Shelton inside Warren. His step-back jumper is short. Rebound, White. Great defensive stop there. And again, Josh Aldridge giving Warren difficult time there. White, the floater, strong. Rebound, Dickens, five seconds to go. Here's Warren. Pushes it up the floor in the corner. Godwin, three at the buzzer. It's good. Godwin, a three, his second three of the game. He has 10 points and a huge momentum lift for Hampton going into the halftime break. 10 first half points for Godwin. A three in the deep corner. Goes in at the buzzer. Hampton at the break. Leads it by 11, 43-32. The Geico halftime report is next here on ESP. Back in Spartanburg at the GB Hodge Center. Halftime score in this Big South Conference men's basketball game. It's Hampton 43 and USC Upstate 32. Brock Bowling, Richmond Weaver with you as we take a look at some of the first half stats. And again, Richmond uh, Hampton got out to a fast start just like it did last night. And it leads by 11 at the break. And it was all about, again, continuing to shoot very efficiently, not only from three-pointer, but just from the field, almost 50% here in the first half, 55% uh, in the first half last night. So they're continuing to show that they love shooting in this gym. As we take a look at some of the first half stats of this game, uh, right now Hampton shooting 48% from the floor, 46% from three. Uh, for Upstate, shooting 37% overall, 33% on three. A plus eight for Upstate on the boards. And a plus four for Hampton on the assist category. And a USC Upstate, uh, eight turnovers in the first half, only two by Hampton. It's uh, taking care of the basketball. Oh, it definitely is. And they're also getting much better balanced scoring right now uh, in terms of you got Shelton obviously leading the way with 16 points. But Davion Warren, he's continuing to show – what type of scorer he is, but also, you know, just trying to get other guys involved as well uh, in, in terms of much better balanced scoring. Halftime score, it is Hampton 43, USC Upstate 32. The Geico Halftime Report continues in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. About Reynolds, we have equipment for that. Back in Spartanburg. Getting you set for the start of the second half of play. It's Hampton leading USC Upstate 43 to 30. Here's a look at the coaching resume of Edward Joyner in his 12th season. Three NCAA tournaments, one NIT, two CBIs, one CIT as well. A three time MIAC tournament most outstanding coach. And there's Acting floor coach Stacy Palmore filling in for Dave Dickerson while he's away from the team. He's been an assistant coach for some other pretty well-known coaches. He was an assistant coach at Coastal Carolina for Cliff Ellis uh, at Georgia under Mark Fox and also at Virginia Tech with Seth Greenberg as Dean goes in, draws the contact and the foul. He will shoot too. So Palmore has uh, learned a lot from a lot of great coaches, including the one he works for right now, Dave Dickerson. Oh, he definitely has, as we see Deuce Dean take a hard look at the hole there. And that's what he wants to do is be able to drive like that. But Coach Palmore, that's why he's in the position that he's in right now, to be able to uh, help lead this team because of the experience that he has. And that's why Coach Dickerson can lean on him to do that. Russell Dean scores his Third point of the game. Hampton, three of three at the line. 
being a 69% free throw shooter. And one of two on that trip. Rebound upstate into the hands of Dalvin White, who's been quiet. I mean, literally quiet. Zero points in the first half. He had a 20-point performance last night, six threes. Hampton's really honed in on him, and he hasn't shot the ball very much. And thus far, hasn't scored a point so far in this game. Bruner knocks it off Dickens' leg out of bounds. Does that surprise you that Dalvin's been so quiet here tonight so far? Yeah, it definitely has, and I think part of it's just been part of the offense that they've had. They're settling for quick shots, and I know Coach Palmore, he's not happy with that, but also I think just from a perspective that Deuce Dean is a bigger guard and has been able to handle him pretty well. Hammond, his third basket, his seventh point. Lead is 10 for Hampton. Trying to go for the sweep and win its second straight over Upstate on its home floor. Dean, pass deflected out of bounds, stays with Hampton underneath. Talked about uh, Coach Joyner's resume. Hampton used to be in the MEAC. Hampton and Upstate now in their third years, respectively, in the Big South Conference. Joined the league at the same time in the summer of 2018. Four to shoot. Here's Warren. He realizes it. Has to put up a three at the buzzer. No rebound by the smallest man on the floor, Dalvin White. And that's the way Dalvin White, he can do more than just score, but he's had an opportunity here. But he, he will get back in the groove. We know how fast he can get things going. Dean in the corner. Hits another three. His third three of the game. He has 13 points. He hit a three at the end of the first half and hits a three right there. The lead is 13. Yeah, Godwin is just showing that he's, again, another one of those trio of guards that can score in bunches. Bruner, left hand and scores. That's his 13th point of the game. Hampton by two. It averages... 70 points a game at 43 in the first half. It's been scoring uh, above its average in the first halves of games so far in this series with USC Upstate as Warren goes inside and he puts it in. And he's looking for the foul there as well. He's wanting to get as many points as he can. 34 last night for Warren. 11 here tonight as Bruner trying to create. Here's Aldrich. Foul down low against Dayshore Dickens. Uh, we talked about uh, Hampton coming over from the MEAC two and a half, almost three years ago. Uh, another team from the MEAC joining the Big South next year in North Carolina A&T out of Greensboro. We'll be playing against Upstate and Hampton next year as Bruner steps inside, leaves it short, rebound Shelton. Warren aggressively going inside. He's fouled. He's being more aggressive here in the early moments of the second half compared to the early moments. Of the well, I think half. in that first half, you could see Josh Aldrich at 6'7 was giving him trouble shooting from the outside. So the way that you combat that is you take it strong to the hole, as you see here, is taking it strong and being very aggressive going into the body of Aldrich. And softly... Rolls it in for his 12th point. Warren, averaged 10 points a game last year, leading the Big South and scoring this year 21.4 per game. And now he has 13. Hampton, five of six of the line, and Hampton has its biggest lead of 15. Now for Upstate, you're in that danger zone that you can't allow them to continue these runs, you've got to be able to stop the run and make a run of your own right here. White rims out on that three, still scoreless in the game after having a, a career tie, high 20 points last night, and that ball somehow is behind the glass wedged between the, the stanchion. I've never seen that. I haven't either, but we're seeing Dickens at seven feet. He can't even get to it. This is one of those rare situations. That how does the ball yeah, get it stuck? Was deflected and 
<laughs> it's more stuck. It's more stuck. Still stuck. There we go. <laughs> it only takes a seven-footer and a broomstick. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing that wasn't a shot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it's a deflected pass, not a shot. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've seen all year. <laughs> Godwin, he thought about it. He has three threes in the game, 13 points. Buffet, shot blocked. By Mozone off of it, they out of bounds. Great defense by Mozone there, and just with his length, he's able to be able to extend and block the shot and force the turnover there as it went off of Bethea's face, actually. All right, so upstate down 15. You can't get it all back in one shot. How does upstate have to attack here? They have to do it just in four minute increments. So right now, you're looking at the basically the 16 minute mark. Within these next four minutes, can you make a run and can you put some defensive pressure on Hampton? Bruner missed a three. Now he tries to go inside, had his pocket picked. Turnover number nine on Upstate. Here comes Hampton. Warren. Seems like he's being more uh, selective with his shot selection here tonight compared to last night. He was firing up everything last night. So is uh, Godwin here tonight. That's way off the mark. Up the floor to Mozone. The pump fake. The shot missed. Loose ball tie up and the possession arrow goes where? Uh, we'll find out after the timeout. 15.48 to go in the game. Pirates of Hampton lead it by 15 on ESPN+. Plus. You to ride on our strength for a retailer near you, visit HerculesTires.com. Hampton by 15, under 16 minutes to go in the game. Brock Bowling, Richmond Weaver with you. Upstate struggling from the field, 36% shooting. A little better shooting night for Hampton, 47%. It leads by 15, 51 36. White out of bounds. You and I were talking during the break. Uh, last night's game seemed like both teams were really using up a lot of energy, and today it seems like both teams are a little bit tired. Definitely so, and Upstate coming off of a nine-day layoff. Now in the second game, struggling a little bit. We saw a lot of energy that first game uh, last night, but now you can see the legs don't seem as fresh. Dean, Ross goes to, over to Warren. He thought about the three. Inside to Dean, lays it in. So Dean over to Warren, back to Dean for the score. Great vision there by Warren to be able to find the open man and not force the issue there because he could have easily tried to shoot that over Hammond but made the, the better pass, and it was a really good pass and nice finish by Dean. Hammond puts in a two. That's his... Ninth point of the game. And it just seems like Upstate really having to labor on offense and then also use up energy on defense. That's the difficult thing about it. They have to use so much energy on defense, it takes away from their ability to use that energy on offense. Deflected by Hammond. Out of bounds, stays with Hampton. You talk about energy. Uh, it's hard to kind of bring that same energy on back-to-back -back nights, but also you have to develop some of your own energy because the fans aren't here. It's a very good point, and it's difficult for teams to do that at times. Gotta, we're seeing some of that. Yeah, you got to generate your own energy. Fans and the bands and People like that, they're not here as there's another wedged ball. I've never seen two in one game, let alone one behind the backboard. <laughs> but Hammond's fouled. He'll shoot two. In front of the glass, behind the glass, we've got some wedges here tonight. <laughs> Broomsticks and <laughs> seven-footers. And... <laughs> we've got it all here on a Friday night in Spartanburg. I think that ball behind the backboard was wedged about 12 feet high, I think, two, two feet above the glass. It's crazy. Had to be with 
the Dickens seven-footer with his wingspan. He wasn't even able to get it. So 10 points for Hammond. Team high, 21 points last night. 72% free throw shooter coming into the game, makes one of two. And if you're Hampton, Coach Joyner has to be uh, pleased with the way his team has performed so far in this series. Good start last night, hung on for dear life, got a win by one. And then here on the road again, he, you know, he said you know, these back-to-backers are still trying to figure it out from an ex- execution standpoint, an energy standpoint, and and uh, his team right now with a 14-point lead, 14 minutes to go. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things that you're starting to see, the team is probably evolving into a better chemistry because now they've been able to play games where, as we talked about last night, they didn't really get to practice that much because yeah. of COVID issues within their program. So now you're starting to see how much of a chemistry they have together as a team. Warren misfires on that shot. Rebound Mozone. Upstate trying to get some action going on offense. The give to Zink for the jam attempt. He's fouled by Dickens. And Zink will head to the line for two. That's three on Dickens. I love that Zink went strong to the hole here. Great pass by Bruner and being able to try to go up against the big seven-footer. And then just look at the sportsmanship by Hampton yep. going over there and picking Zink up as well. So you love seeing that type of sportsmanship in this conference. And Zink, the uh, epitome of a student athlete, just recorded recently his fifth consecutive semester of a perfect 4.0 GPA. All A's. I made an A once. <laughs> Only once? I made a B once, too. <laughs> veteran player several juniors on this team he has eight points upstate eight of nine at the line down 12 plenty of time to go but it needs stops they definitely do and and it's going to be difficult in terms of if they don't have the depth either but they off the mark on the three rebound hammond in transition pull up jump shot and leaves it short and the rebound by hampton here comes Warren. Whoa, collision with Hammond. Foul on Hammond is first. And that's that stutter, that hesitation that draws the defender into a bad position defensively and then explosion by Warren. Yeah, you talked about Hampton and the lack of practice time because Joyner said earlier in the week, Coming into this weekend, 13 games played, only about 25 practices. They didn't start practice until until the end of November. First game was December 1st. Turnover on Zink. Dean down the lane. Nice feed to Bethay for the jam. His first two points of the game, and just like that, it's back up to a 14-point game. Unforced error there by Zink trying to do too much. Just get back into your offensive rhythm and don't have to hit the home run with a big pass like that. Bruner is fouled. You know, we talked about Galvin White, a scoreless tonight. Remember late in the game, he landed awkwardly on his leg, and I think you talked to Coach Palmore after the game, and I think they were uncertain about what his uh, situation was. Yeah, it seemed to, be, seemed to be a cramp uh, and nothing more serious than that, but he played 37 minutes last night, and, and, I, and I think that's probably had a toll on him here in this game uh, tonight. Zink muscles it up inside. He's fouled. He'll head of the line for a three-point opportunity. You talk about a grind for the Big South this season. 20 games, and they're all back-to-backers. Yes, it, very difficult, but the guy who can handle that type of grind that's Evan Zink and you can see how strong he was going up through the hole there and trying to have a three-point play completes the three-point play here's Warren inside floats it up and in he now has 15 almost a quiet 15 and just how easy that was though with that floater as you described 
Mozone, that's a deep three. Count it for Bryson Mozone. That was from well beyond three-point range. And that's a shot that he can hit because he was in rhythm. There's a good offensive flow there, even though it was a, a quick possession, but it was still a good offensive flow. And the lead for Hampton, back down to 10. Shelton, quick release, three, no, rebound upstate. Trying to get something going in transition. Here's Bruner, down the lane, all the way for the lay-in. 15 for Bruner, it's down to eight. Upstate continues to just hang around. They have that knack of just being able to hang around. Now can they just get a few defensive stops? Warren. Inside, ball knocked away. Loose ball, tie up. Jump ball, arrow stays with Hampton with four to shoot. Timeout on the floor. 11-14 to go in the game. Spartans trying to make another comeback. Down eight here on ESPN+. Plus. Year. This year's sweepstakes grand prize package is brought to you by Hercules Tires, Sunbelt Rentals, and Pepsi. Head to BigSouthSports.com slash sweepstakes to enter. Deadline to register is February 15th. Brock Bowling, Richmond Weaver with you. All right, Richmond, so Upstate is down eight, similar to last night. It's right there. The lead, the deficit is manageable. And amazingly, Upstate staying in this game without Dalvin White having scored a point so far. As Warren goes inside, he can't convert to rebound Upstate. That's those type of defensive stops can you get and then be able to convert on the, on the offensive end here. They can do that. They can get back in this game. And they're right there. I mean, they, they can do it. There's plenty of time left, only down by eight points. It's just a matter of do they have enough energy here to really focus in? Zink. Strong move inside. He slid the feet, traveling on Upstate. Number 11 in the game. And there were so many moments last night where shots rimmed in and out for Upstate. And and uh, just resulted in a, a one-point defeat that had to have been a hard loss to swallow, tough pill to swallow last night as Warren goes inside, left hand and scores. What a difficult shot there. He was off balance, looked like he was almost going to travel there and then be able to get it up with his left hand. That's very impressive. Bruner. Fade away, jump shot, no. Fight for the rebound, out of bounds off of Hampton. And it stays with Upstate. And for Bruner, those are the type of shots you'd like to see him go straight up rather than fading away. Now, I know he has the ability to make that type of shot, but there, when you're trying to get back in this game, have some fundamentals and go straight up with your shot. Dalvin White. Back into the game after a break. Let's see if Upstate can get him going here in the second half. He went scoreless in the first 20 minutes. Reverse layup missed by Bruner. Rebound by Sahim Anthony, and he throws it away. That's definitely an unforced error by Hampton. We haven't seen too many yeah. of those type of errors. I think that's that their, only their fourth turner turnover of the game. Zink against Anthony, goes left hand and got it. Zink's just too big and strong for Sahim Anthony there. And easy two points for Zink. Inside of single digits. Anthony just into the game. Missing that three, offensive rebound by Dean. One-on-one -on -one against Mozo. Dean strong, collision, foul. I think it's on Zink. Nope, it's on Mozo. I'll take your pick. You yes. can only call the foul on one, right? <laughs> well, I think Zink did go straight up, uh, but Mozo went up and then came down with the, with the body arm. There's Russell Dean. Great assist man, had 14 assists in the first game against Gardner-Webb. 
earlier this year. He is second in the Big South in assists at 6.6 a game. That's his sixth point of the game. And Hampton making its free throws, six out of seven. He had four points last night in the win. Are you surprised that Hampton's doing as well as it has given the fact it lost two guys from last year that averaged over 22 points a game? I am until I saw some film and saw Davion Warren play and Chris <laughs> yeah. Shelton. Now you can see why they were able to replace that scoring. And just what the offseason program that even during a COVID offseason, what Davion Warren was able to do in terms of improving his ability to score. It had Jermaine Morrow. He averaged... 24 points a game. Ben Stanley averaged 22 points a game. It lost some height with Greg Hextall. Uh, but the team is 5-4 and four in the Big South, 6-8 and eight in the league, and a very strange pandemic season for all teams. Zink again. No, it bounces out. That's been the story of this team this weekend. The shot's just rimming out especially in the second half on that goal. Exactly. It's just amazing how they're so unlucky with the bounce right now. And great move by Zink there to take it strong to the hole and look like it was going to be an opportunity for a three-point play, but just bounces out. Here's Zink, 13 points. And short of the free throw. And that looked like a fatigue free throw. That definitely did. He had no legs on that no, shot no whatsoever. Yeah. He's been battling a, a shoulder issue that keeps popping in and out of place. Makes one of two. Zink with 14. Down to single digits again. Nine-point game with 9.20 to go. Warren, step back three. Book it. Josh Aldridge got caught behind the screen there and couldn't get over the top of it, and Warren made him pay for it. He's heating it up now with 21 points in the game. Here's Zink, draws the double, needs help. Bruner, three is missed, rebound. Hampton, ball loose, people diving. Upstate had it into Zink's hands, and take a timeout. Yep, timeout. Upstate. 8.52 to go. Upstate hanging around, down 12 on ESPN+. Plus. You can drive in here in, Char here in Spartanburg, where the food is always good since 1946. Brock and Rich back at the GB Hodge Center. There's... Davion Warren, he had nine points in the first half, 12 so far in the second half, 21 for the game. He had 34, a career high last night. Here's Upstate out of the timeout, trying to cut into the deficit some more. Hammond, wide open, three. That's way off the mark. Offensive rebound, Bruner. Goes up strong and puts it in. And that's one of the things that Upstate does really well is crashing the offensive boards. And you can say that, well, also, they have the opportunity because they're not shooting so well, but even that doesn't matter. They're still crashing the boards and having a good opportunity to get some second chance points. And still hanging around, down 10. Here comes the double on Warren, and the ball loose. A turnover on Hampton. It's fifth. Yeah, a little different look there, trapping uh, Davion Warren. As Bruner comes up short on that three. Kind of rushed that possession, it looked like. Rebound Hampton. Inside of eight minutes to go, 10-point game. Upstate still in this. It needs stops. Dean whips it inside to Anthony, and he traveled. He sure did. And a timeout again, 7.50 to go. Hampton by 10 on ESPN+. Plus. Our strength. Back here in Spartanburg, let's take a look at the Hampton Pirates' upcoming schedule. Uh, two home games next week against Campbell, then on the road at Winthrop for two games. That'll be tough. And then a home game against High Point. That'll be on 
ESPN3. Uh, how good is Winthrop? They are very good. Yeah. Yes, they, they are head and shoulders, the supreme team here in the Big South. Yeah. Well, Dalvin White uh, back in the game. He has yet to score in this game. He's been red hot the previous three games, but so far he's been held uh, in check. Here's Zink going up against Dickens. Left hand, and oh, it spins out again. And a foul. Is it on Zink? Nope, it's on Shelton for Hampton is second. How did that not go in? It's amazing how that did not go in. Zink did everything that you could imagine perfectly, going to the left hand there, and it just rolled in and out. Zink with 14 points. But you can see going to the paint has been an emphasis this game. They were uh, outplayed by Hampton last night with points in the paint, outscored 32 to 18. But tonight, 26 to 22. So they've been able to reverse that, but still just haven't been able to make enough shots or get enough defensive stops. Shot clock inside of 10. Dean, one-on-one -on -one against Bruner. He finds Warren with five. Up top, Godwin, high arcing, three. Hit the uh, shot clock after it hit the rim. Goes back over to Upstate. And uh, you and I talked about it during the break. Uh, upstate, they can't trade baskets anymore. It needs stops. They have to have stops, and there's one stop. Now they've got to convert. And obviously, unfortunately, that last shot by Zink down here Crazy that it didn't go in, but now can they just forget about that, have amnesia, and focus on this next offensive series? Zink, position, missing, fouled. <laughs> he's just. He's amazed he, that they're not going in. He, he's just sick to his stomach that those shots normally that fall for him aren't going in off the glass. There must be something on that rim on this end. Is it like an in, invisible shield? <laughs> Looks looks good. It look yeah. It, it, it <laughs> seems like it's ten feet regulation height. Everything is there, but for whatever reason, you just cannot get it to fall. That one rattles in. And so this is going to be the key here. When you have no time running off the clock, you've got to be able to convert these free throws. And last night, some missed opportunities at the free throw line probably cost Upstate. And so, can they convert? They're doing a much better job tonight. He's got to keep that up. Two for two for Zink. He has 16. Down to an eight-point game again. Upstate needing stops. Trying to stop Warren, and they foul Warren. And it's on Hammond, his second. Is it on the floor, or is it shooting? That looked like it was on the floor yeah, to me. it's on the floor. Coach Joyner disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> Buck Joyner is trying to get anything he can out of the refs. But they back in. Mismatch on Zink. Godwin rises, fires a, up a two. That's missed. High rebound snagged out of the air by Mozone. Good defensive stop there. And Upstate's bench is getting into the game, trying to get some spark energy. Oh, an offensive foul. Is it on Zink? Yeah, it did he look like he wrapped his elbow around to create that space to get to the rim. It came from the official on the other side of the floor. Because he had the better vision there to be able to see that as he yeah. spins see. around here. Right there, yeah. uses the arm bar. Yeah, that was a good call by the yeah. refs there. Dean all the way, left hand, score the basket and one. And he'll head of the line for a free throw. And just like last night, uh, every time Upstate seems to be right there, Hampton responds to the big bucket. They sure do. And here on this drive, there could have been, before we see that play there, a strong drive by Dean. He actually probably could have been called for his own push off.
Dean is from the Palmetto State, from Columbia, South Carolina. He has nine. Hampton, eight of nine at the line. Back up to double digits on the lead. Inside six minutes to go. Here's Hammond driving and leaves it short with a blocking foul called on Hampton. And Hammond will head of the line for two. And you can see Upstate's not settling for the three. Even though they're down by double digits, they don't have to settle for threes right now and try to force the issue. They can still run their offense and try to get to get to the hole and score. There's Hammond at the line. Ten points so far tonight. 72% free throw shooter. He led the Big South Conference last year in free throw percentage, 83%. His numbers at the line have been a little down this year, but still having a good junior campaign. Point number 11 on the night. And it's down to 10, and it seems like every time teams try to make a comeback, they get it to single digits, which Hammond can do here. That seems to kind of set off a psychological alarm clock, like, hey, the team's right back in it, you know? It definitely does, and it's on both sides mentally for both teams, how much energy they're having to spend to be able to get back in the game or stop runs. Turnover on Hampton. Here comes Bruner. Shot blocked by Dean. Taken back by Hammond, though. To Mozo, now to White. And a foul on Dean. His yeah. third. And that was a mismatch there. Dean just not big enough to be able to stop Zink. And great recognition there for the Spartans not to force the issue and potentially have a turnover there after this great block by mm. Dean. And here, Hammond could have tried to force the issue, but he pulled it back out to get the offense going and get back into a better set. Another miss by Zink. And now down the stretch here with five and a half minutes to go. This is when it's very crucial. You've got to hit these free throws. And Coach Palmore talked about that last night. Just missed opportunities. You've got to make you got to take advantage of them. One of two for Nevin. And now a Warren for Hampton. Kind of hobbling a little bit. Says he's okay, but he's limping. And I didn't see what happened there. I don't know if he just turned his and twisted his knee, but he definitely seemed to be in a little bit of pain there. But as all offensive players, that pain goes away once you get the ball in your hands. Warren, hand check foul. It's on Hammond. That's his third, and that puts the Pirates into the... It's a, at the line for a one and one Warren's a 77% free throw shooter. Now he has 22 points now. And <laughs> Rich, I know, I know it's not 34 like last night, but it seems like he's uh, had a quiet 22. Tonight. He definitely has. And, again, just continuing hot shooting even at the free throw line. He was 5 for 5 last night at the free throw line. And, again, here tonight hasn't missed. Oh, Until I jinx him. <laughs> you did that last night, too. <laughs> yes, <you>? I did. <laughs> We're going to have to put some asterisks on the stats. <laughs> I'll have to apologize to Davion after the game. Foul on Hampton. It's on Pathé. It seems they're starting the to call the game a little bit closer here. Yeah. Uh, that's the the hand check there by Hammond, and then down here, just the body foul. It seems like they're trying to go a little bit closer. And here's where Zink needs to make both instead of one of two. Ribs out. Fourteen of nineteen at the line is upstate tonight, so. 
Been shooting fairly well at the line. And one of two. Zink with 18, three shy of tying his career high. It's down to a, an eight-point deficit, 4.50 to go. And a steal by Upstate, what it needed. Here comes Dalvin White. He's yet to score in this game. Turns on the juice, puts it up off the glass. No. Rebound by Hampton. Even the tough shots like that by Dalvin White still just aren't falling for him. But the bench for Upstate, they're trying to create some energy, trying to get some motivation. And you can see it started paying off there, but pick up a foul there on Warren. It's on Zink, and that's his fourth of the game. There's Stacy Palmore. Asked him about what's it like coaching with a mask on this year, if he's gotten used to it or what his thoughts were. And he says he, he's starting to get used to it. He says he, he cheats a little bit here and there. He has to pull the mask down to sometimes uh, shout across the court to get his point across. Uh, but he jokingly said he likes the fact that nobody can see his facial expression because he, <laughs> he, has, he has a poker face because of the mask. That's right. <laughs> and it is a, every coach is having to adjust and be able to have a difficult time, I should say, in terms of communication. It's a challenge out there when you've got guys running them down the court and you're trying to yell, and even though he's, these gyms are empty, it's still hard for these players to hear at times. Hammond, tough shot, rebound Aldridge, and over the back foul called on Upstate. It's on Aldridge. And the thing about masks, when you, uh, as you see the uh, over the backer on Aldrich, the thing about masks for the coaches, if you're on one end of the floor, your team's on the other end, they can't read your lips without you pulling the mask down. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's a, it, it sometimes can be even an advantage when you're calling out certain sets that you're not going to be able to read your lips. Now, I'd have to say that was a questionable call there yeah. on Aldrich. That seemed that was just a basketball play, really... Yeah. Let them play, not, not to call a foul like that. Dean with 11 points. Double-digit deficit again for USC Upstate. Exactly four minutes to go. Bow zone, quick release, three. Rebound, Dean. And now time becoming a factor inside. Four minutes to go. 11-point lead for Hampton as Dean lost it into Bethay's hands. Hampton working down the shot clock. It's now inside of 10. Warren, step back, three, got it. 26 for Davion Warren. Aldrich. Comes up short. Uh, they needed that one. Rebound by Hampton. Aldrich definitely was out of position catching that pass there. I think he was still thinking about that step back move by Warren there. What a beautiful move by Warren. Foul on White, his second. And we get our final media. Timeout. 3.01 to go in Spartanburg, and Hampton leads it by 14. $500 instantly. Ready to go inside and see your new cash five? Ready to see it. I'm ready to play it. Back in Spartanburg for the final 3.01 of this one. Hampton leads USC Upstate 74 to 60. Brock Bowling, Richmond Weaver with you, and Richmond, how about Davion Warren? The long step back three. Rims it in. And that's just the special ability that he has even over a 6'7 defender with Josh Aldrich. And Aldrich has given him problems early on in the game, and that was a move by Coach Palmore to change things up defensively. But Warren is just too good of a scorer, too good of a shooter, uh, and he makes uh, upstate pay. 
Here's Bethay at the line. Transfer from Howard. Got a waiver to play this year. Last year at Howard, uh, 24 games played in his sophomore campaign. 0 for 2 on that trip. And those are the things that Upstate needs. Now can they convert on the other end here where they've been struggling, especially from the three-point line, only one of nine this second half. White for three. His first points of the game. Nothing but net on the three. Down to 11. Right on cue, what they needed, and they now got to have some stops quickly here. Well, Hampton couldn't have asked for better execution on his game plan in terms of trying to slow down Dalvin White. That's his first points of the game. Upstate down 11. Warren from the foul line, short. Rebound upstate, zinc to White. Mozone for the two-hand jam. And again, there's still time here, and it's great recognition by White to find Mozone for the easy two. Now another opportunity to get a defensive stop here. It's down to single digits, 74-65. But under two minutes to go, they foul Dean, and he will shoot two. Here's the updated schedule, upcoming schedule, rather, for USC Upstate uh, at Charleston Southern. Buccaneers having a difficult season so far. Then home against Gardner-Webb and then at Radford. And Charleston Southern, I think, uh, one and nine overall, something like that. Yeah, tough situation yeah. with, obviously, COVID issues, injuries, and opt-outs yeah. uh, for Charleston Southern there. Thirteen for Dean. Hampton, 14 of 18 at the line. Here comes Upstate, needs points in a hurry. And Bruner, kicked ball, stays with Upstate. And with Charleston Southern struggling this year, you would think and hope that Upstate would be able to grab two wins there, at least a split down in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Brewer, or Bruner rather, missing on the shot. Rebound, Hampton. And with these back-to-backs and with COVID and just you know, all the biorhythms of college basketball and teams, uh, unpredictable this year, you, you, you really never know how this uh, race is going <laughs> to come down in this uh Big South Conference or any conference for that matter. You definitely don't. And as you mentioned, you would think that it would be an opportunity for Upstate going down to Charleston Southern to pick up two wins. But that's not a given necessarily no. because of on the road and the back-to-back and how fresh these legs for the Spartans can, can they get energized for two road games. White, that's a deep three. Not this time. Rebound, Zink. Hammond, the pump fake. Fouled by Dickens. And, you know, some, some coaches will say on these back-to-backs that these are college kids, 18 to 22 years old. They're young. They're healthy. Uh, but still, to, at a certain point, 10 back-to-backs in one conference season, that's got to take a, a toll. Oh, it definitely does. And when you have a team like Upstate that uh, doesn't have a deep bench, that can really weigh in or you know, continue to compound the situation as the season progresses. And it can be a difficult situation. Yeah, Upstate, uh, not a very deep team. Brandon Martin, he's been out with an injury. Cartier Jernigan's out with a foot injury. Mr. Goodlow, he's out for the season with an ACL. Uh, Jatavius Watson, he's missed some time with a foot injury. Yeah, and these players are playing, you know, well over 30 minutes. Dalvin White had 37 minutes last night. And Hammond and Bruner, 35 minutes. I mean, it's, it's difficult. Then on the flip side, you look at somebody like uh, Davion Warren for Hampton. He played 40 minutes last night. Yeah. And he still seems, now he's not shooting as well as he did last night, but it's hard to shoot 65% each night. 
but he seems to still have a lot of gas in his tank, so to speak. And uh, one missing member for Upstate's team this year, at least on the uh, in games, has been uh, Kayvon Moore, the transfer from your alma mater, Clemson, still waiting uh, on the waiver to get him to play uh, this season because his transfer situation is complicated. He's transferred now twice. Yes, transferring from Texas A&M to Clemson and then now here to Upstate. And I know Coach Palmore has talked about, I think there's a sense of frustration that they don't have an answer yet in, in terms of the waiver and they know what type of valuable player he could be in this league and especially for this Spartan team. And then at what point, if you get into February and still it's not resolved, do you, if he gets cleared in late February, you got to probably sit him out so he doesn't burn a year of eligibility just at the end of February. Well, and I think this year they're in, uh, everybody's getting a, well, that's right. a, a that's pass right. that's where – uh, they don't have to use that year of eligibility. But you also have to look at just from a team chemistry standpoint, yeah. you know, it, how fast can he come in and, uh, you know, get into a flow with the team from that perspective. I forgot about that uh, special waiver situation or year of eligibility situation. Thank you for that, my friend. Yes, sir. Hammond scores. 16 for Hammond. Timeout, Stacey Palmore. It's a 30. Well, in all reality, it's hard to keep up with all of the moving parts well, in yeah. all of these different sports. Uh, you know, wh what is, what rules are changing, what they're looking at in terms of conferences, and it seems like every conference is different. Next up for USC Upstate, as we mentioned, a trip to Charleston, South Carolina. Against the Charleston Southern Buccaneers, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN Plus on January 19th. That's uh, trying to remember what day of the week it is. It's uh, Tuesday. It's hard to keep up with Tuesday. days. Tuesday. <laughs> it was a difficult time in 2020 to keep up with <laughs> days, and it seems that 2021 <laughs> you're falling into that same situation where it's hard and hard to keep up with each and every day because everything's always changing. There's always something different that's happening. Baseball pass down the floor. Zink fouls Bethay. And he's fouled out of the game. And Zink does have a tough time. Once he starts getting into that foul trouble area, yeah. he typically mm. will, will foul out. Well, where does Upstate go from here after uh, having a three-game winning streak and now dropping two straight? Well, I, I think part of it was they lost some of the momentum when yeah. the Presbyterian games were postponed, and I think that can have an effect on them. Even though they were able to practice hard and you know get a little bit of rest, it definitely messed up their flow. And so now it's you've got to be able to rebound. You've got to have amnesia. And, Mozone taking it strong to the hole there. You just can't focus on what has happened in the past. you got to have that windshield mentality and look ahead for the next opponent. Yeah, if anything, you know, we thought that the layoff would be beneficial in terms of rest. And if anything, it might have backfired because, like you said, that momentum went away and and uh, tough defeat last night. And you got to think, I know Coach Palmore said you got to have a short memory, but uh, that had to really be a tough one to sleep on last night yeah and I think especially with just this season and how they started as well upstate with their COVID issues and also you got to remember that their main guy coach Dave Dickerson is not here in the game and not coaching so that's that's a whole different challenge for this team also so there's a lot that's been going on for upstate yeah Hammond rims in a three. That's his 19th point of the game. Upstate down 10. With 10 seconds to go, and Dean and Hampton will just dribble the ball out, run out the rest of the clock. The Hampton Pirates 
with a two-game sweep here at USC Upstate, 84-74, the final. Rich, your final thoughts on this one? I think it was all just about the guard play for Hampton, just too much for Upstate. Upstate didn't have the energy here in the second game and just well-balanced scoring for Hampton. With the win, Hampton goes to 7-8 and eight on the year, 6-4 and four in the Big South. With the loss, Upstate drops to 3-11, and 3-5 and five in the Big South Conference. That's going to wrap things up here for us here tonight at the GB Hodge Center. Final score once more, Hampton 84, USC Upstate 74 for Richmond Weaver and the rest of our crew. Brock Bowling saying so long from Spartanburg. You've been watching Big South Conference Men's College Basketball on ESPN+. Plus.